All right, session four, week four, I committed to doing the six weeks of self-coaching. But what I want to say is we're not going to do videos like this after the six weeks. These are entirely too long for my attention span. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do short, concise, actionable videos. And I am putting that together now. Um, so no worries. If these are too long for you, if it's just too much information, if you don't feel like there's actionable steps, it's okay. It's still good information to have. Um, self-coaching is the most important. I, I've had a week this past week where I have not been self-coaching myself and couldn't figure out why I wasn't as productive as I normally was. And so it is that important. Um, so I just wanted to say that up front. We're going to make some changes, but we are going to finish up this six weeks. Feelings, super important. So stay with me. <laughs> what are they? Where do they come from? Why do they matter? When we allow negative emotions from a place of compassion, we gain authority over them. When we resist negative emotions, react to them or attempt to avoid them, we suffer. And that's from Brooke Castillo. That's in the, in the work that we do. So stay to the end and I'll tell you where to get the booklet. In the back of this booklet is a model. It's a, a feelings wheel. And when I first got with um, self-coaching scholars, um, that's kind of the program before certification. And it teaches you to do exactly this, to self-coach yourself. And when I first got with them and I had my first coaching session, she would say, okay, so how does that make you feel? And I'd have no idea. I mean, I didn't really have a feelings vocabulary much beyond sad, glad, mad, happy, you know. And so to, to develop that category and to see the slight changes and differences is super important. Um, teaching and concepts that we're going to have in this video, what feelings are, why they matter, where feelings come from, including the difference between sensations and feelings, emotional balance, why we want to allow feelings instead of resisting, reacting, or avoiding, how to allow and process feelings, creating feelings to fuel action, and why discomfort is important. And then we're going to talk about indulgent emotions. So what feelings are? Feelings are feelings and then also called emotions are simply vibrations in our body caused from a thought. So that's so important. However, we're feeling is caused from a thought. Sometimes we aren't aware enough to know what that thought is. But if we really like breathe deep and check in, you will find it. And it might be a series of thoughts. Um, and sometimes you're feeling more than one emotion at the same time as well. And that's because you're thinking more than one thought. A feeling is a different is different from a sorry, excuse me. It's different from a physical sensation like hunger. And so here we just have feelings and sensations just to kind of show the difference. For feelings, we have frustrated, cranky, lonely, agitated, bored. This is in no means a long list. It's just some examples. For sensations, we have hungry, cold, thirsty, sick, hot. So you can see the differences in the two. Why feelings matter? Feelings are the reason we do or don't do everything. Whatever we do is because how we think it will make us feel. Every decision, dream we achieve or let die, relationship we nurture or ruin and so on, we naturally, we naturally avoid negative emotions because of how it feels. Avoiding discomfort at any cost can make us live small. Why are people unhappy? One reason um, is that people believe they shouldn't be unhappy. That causes a lot of unhappiness. No one teaches us that unhappiness is a necessary and valuable part of the human experience. And if we really think about that, we, and I, I think I'll talk about that in later slides, but we don't want to be happy all the time. Um, negative emotion makes positive emotions possible. Why we want to allow feelings. It's important to allow feelings instead of resisting, reacting, or avoiding them. So what does resisting look like? Resisting is where a lot of us get in trouble. I often encourage my clients not to be dismissive of their own thoughts. Um, what that can look like is, I feel really hurt by this, but I know I shouldn't. So they'll like express themselves and then they shut it right down. 
And when they quickly shut themselves down, the thought that is causing the feeling is going to just keep looping and causing them the same negative feeling or even gain strength. And the words are gone for this one. Interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this one is reacting. And we're just going to roll with it. Um, reacting is yelling, screaming, throwing things. I mean, imagine it like a, and sometimes it's not that extreme. A reacting might be like saying that thing that you didn't want to say. Um, that's reacting. And she compared it in the work to acting like a child. And I don't think that's fair. Um, maybe just because I've done a lot of reacting. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm uncomfortable with it. Uh, <laughs> but once you get a handle on your emotions, you do much, much less reacting. Um, and I'm sure that just gets better and better. But we all still do it, right? We're, we all yell when we don't want to yell. We all um, have that reaction. So that's another way. Avoiding. I thought this was a perfect picture because we a lot of us will avoid with food, right? Escaping or dulling an emotion with things like overeating, over drinking, overworking, over shopping, Netflix, social media, and so on. We call this buffering. And that is doing one of these behaviors to avoid a feeling, a feeling with it having a net negative content. Oh, sorry two feelings in there, to avoid a feeling, and it has a net negative consequence. So in, in this example, overeating to avoid a feeling is eventually going to cause weight gain. That's your negative consequence. Now, if you are enjoying Netflix and you're not having any negative consequence from that, that is not a problem. That's not buffering. But if you're enjoying Netflix when you could be accomplishing a goal, then, I mean, you could always be accomplishing a goal. But, you know, if there's a specific thing that you're, you're, you're avoiding, then that is buffering. So how to allow and process feelings. There is no way around negative emotion. As they say, the only way around is through, which means we need to learn to process them. When we become curious and willing to experience these vibrations, we find that they, are, they aren't such a big deal after all. Um, the way Brooke explains it is... Um, you know, like she, she goes through and one, once you, you find it in your body and like you, you feel that emotion, it's like, oh, whoa, that's what I was trying to run away from all this time. It's really not that bad. You know, like what is fear except, and it's different in everyone, but for me, fear is like a tightness in my chest, maybe a tingling in the back of my neck. Um, it, there, there's just a few descriptions. Maybe my stomach drops. You know, you have that feeling of, of a drop in your stomach. Like, that's fear. Is that really a problem? No. I mean, it, it was scary the first time to get on camera and do these videos. But fear isn't a problem. It's just something that's there to protect us. And we don't have to be upset with it. Just one example. Practical things to process a feeling. Pretend you're describing an emotion you're feeling to a Martian that has never experienced the feeling. Write it down. Where is it in your body? What does it feel like exactly? What are you thinking? Become the watcher. Witness yourself experiencing the emotion, seeing yourself having the feeling as though you're sitting across the room from yourself. This will create a distance between the experience, including the thought that you're choosing and the feeling it's creating. Hold the feeling in a place of peace. Accept the emotion and be present with it. Allow it to be there. Pretend to hold it in your hand and approach it with childlike curiosity. That's kind of what I did with fear with these videos. Um, I just kind of saw that it was there, thought it was kind of interesting, looked at the thoughts that were, that were causing it, and decided that they were fine and just went ahead and went forward anyway. So open up to the emotion, allow it in, move towards it. These are skills we need to learn to develop. Once we are good at allowing emotions, everything is possible. So can you recall a time that you were trying to avoid an emotion by buffering? Did you know at the time that you were buffering? Or is this all new information to you? Have you tried sitting with an emotion like a, an emotion and allowing it? If so, what was that like? 
what emotion can you imagine that you would want to eat to avoid? What does that emotion feel like in your body? What is the worst emotion you can imagine feeling and why? And sitting with an emotion, I want to talk about that just a little bit more because people get kind of stuck on that one. They think that they're sitting with an emotion, but then it it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. And you you think you're allowing the emotion, but you're actually resisting it because if it's getting stronger, you know, it's just like um, the one example they use is pushing a beach ball under the water. You can do that for so long, but it's going to get harder and harder to push that beach ball under and hold it under. And eventually you're going to have to let go and it's going to pop back up. And so I just want you to kind of watch if you're trying to sit with an emotion and it's getting stronger, then you're thinking something that's making it stronger. So creating feelings to fuel action. This is fantastic news. Because our feelings drive our actions, we want to get well-versed at creating feelings we want to feel in order to fuel our desired actions. Most people wait for feelings to come along. They believe something like inspiration, motivation, or enthusiasm will happen to them. We create all these and more with our thoughts. And so a lot of people talk about motivation, like, oh, I just, especially with people with ADHD, right? Like, I just... Why, I, I wanted to feel motivated. I want to feel motivated to clean that room or to do, do those dishes or to start that project. But that's not how motivation works. It doesn't come first and then, and then make you feel like it. You have to get started and you'll get motivated. Um, so what that would look like in a model, I'm just going to go back to that real quick. Let's just leave it here. Choices. Let's say you want to choose to feel motivation. What do you do? You pop that into the model. Feeling, motivation. What would you need to be thinking in order to feel motivated? It might be something like, it's not going to be that hard. It's not going to take that long. I can do this. Um, there's plenty of thoughts that you could put in there. It's going to, I'm going to be so excited when this project is done. This room's going to look amazing when I'm finished. I'm just going to give it 20 minutes and then I'll stop. It's no big deal. Um, so those are, those are kind of the way that you, you create it. Um, and then you're going to put down what your actions would be. All right. And so the circumstance might be, say, starting that project. What are your actions towards starting the project that are going to make you feel motivated or inactions could be also as well. Discomfort is the price of growth. Discomfort is a currency of our dreams to be pushed past our current capacity is uncomfortable. If you aren't uncomfortable in your life in some way, you're not growing. I took this to a coaching call last last week or the week before. I'm just telling her how uncomfortable I was with this or that. And she was like, this is fantastic news. Great. When you start feeling comfortable all the time, come back and talk to me because something's wrong. You're not doing enough. And I was like, good point. Wow. So in this, in this, they threw in Dan Sullivan's four C's and that kind of goes with that discomfort. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of show that to you along the way. So number one, commitment, commit to a goal, no matter what. So there has not been much in life, but I'm getting better and better at it, but there hasn't been much in life that I've truly committed to. But what true commitment looks like is I am going to do this no matter what. Those obstacles and those strategies are going to get, they're going to come up and they're going to get in the way and that's okay. I, I'm still going to do it no matter what. You need courage to keep moving through and keep the commitment even though it's uncomfortable. You need capability. So with the capability, with courage, we move forward and develop skills to increase our capability as we're trying to do things, we're constantly going to run into things that we don't know how to do. I've, that's been so much with YouTube. I've got to fix some of my videos because they're starting at the wrong time. I'm, I'm learning. And so I'm developing that capability. And it takes courage for me to keep moving forward and learning new things that I don't know. So confidence comes when we become capable and we're confident in our new skill. Okay? So, so my point was that that goes with the discomfort. Discomfort is going to come along each each and every one of these. It's going to it's going to come. You're going to be uncomfortable committing to something 100%. You're going to need that courage 
when you get uncomfortable. You're going to be very uncomfortable when you're trying to develop capability. And confidence is the result. So goals. Pick a goal. If you know that discomfort is necessary is a necessary part of getting to your goal, are you willing to feel it? How would your experience be different if discomfort meant you were on the right track? What would it be like if you saw discomfort as a green light instead of a red or a yellow? So join our Facebook group. It is Learn to Thrive with ADHD. Um, that is where you get the complete workbook for free with that feelings wheel in the back. There are some worksheets. You can do it or not do it. It's totally up to you. Take it. It's free. Um, even just to check out the wheel. Um, you can fill it out online or print it. If you print it, do it grayscale. Um, I made them very simple, very easy to print. Um, you will find a link below the video to join our group and get your free gift. So subs whoop, went too far. subscribe, click the bell, share this with anybody you think it would be helpful to. Um, I already talked about that. Join our Facebook group. <laughs> an extra slide there. If you're ready to work with me, one-on-one -on -one or with a group or in group coaching, get in touch with me. You can comment below. You can contact me on Facebook or you can join the group and talk to me there. All right. Thank you, everybody. That is the end. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye-bye.